The interesting thing about Adam Hawley, who owns Steon Design, is that he didn't start out to make a business re-engineering Porsche 964s. He's an ex-OEM automotive designer who happens just to be a bit mad on Porsche. And this whole venture began from his desire to make what he saw as his perfect 911. Remember to head over to pistonheads.com after watching this video to research and buy your next car. And here it is, the 911 by Theon Design. A beautiful recreation of a classic 911 but built off a 964 body. This particular car is for a customer in Belgium but each one of these products is a very bespoke thing. It's very tailored to the particular wishes of the client. This one has been designed as a more of a grand tourer, sort of more relaxed car, but you can tailor it to something more, I don't know, GT3, a bit more hardcore if you'd like, and there's everything in between. Let me talk you through a few of the changes to the cars. For example, up front, we've now got an electric power steering and electric air conditioning compressor, and that's there for two reasons really. One is to move the weight distribution forward, which as we know is a good thing in a 911, but also Adam who designs these cars is very keen on the aesthetics and he wanted to clean up the engine bay and remove a lot of these components. And come on, how good does that engine bay look? The basic Theon engine package is a fully rebuilt air-cooled flat six with either 3.6, 3.8 or 4 litres. It's got independent throttle bodies, ported heads, a lighter bottom end and motorsport grade Marley pistons and barrels. You can have a naturally aspirated engine and having driven one of those already as a high revving 4 litre with 400 horsepower, I can tell you it is delicious. Turbocharging is also offered, but the owner of this car wanted something a little lazier and talkier. And as he has a fondness for supercharged Astons and Jaguars, he's chosen a 3.6 litre motor with a Rotex supercharger bolted to where the air conditioning compressor would have been. It also produces 400 horsepower, but torque is up to 367 pounds foot. It's a classic interpretation of a 911, so obviously we have to have Fuchs style alloy wheels. Here they're bigger to incorporate wider rubber, our Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres. Now within there, we've got a set of cross-drilled iron discs. They've come straight from a 911 Carrera RS. However, you can upgrade those to carbon ceramic discs, which are built by a company called Surface Transforms. And then there's the bodywork. So this car is all steel, just like any normal 964. However, you can have every single panel made into carbon fibre if you want to. Believe it or not, it doesn't actually save any price. It saves 100 kilograms in weight, but in terms of the cost, the steel body these days is more expensive, A, because of the price of steel, and also because all these panels are all hand finished, and that's such a labor intensive process. Other details include the little Speedster style aluminium door mirrors, and then moving to the back of the car, there's lots of beautiful, exquisite details around here. A couple of things I want to show you. Now, it is a 911 with a lot of power, 400 horsepower, so it is quite fast, which means we do need some form of aerodynamic device to keep the back end down. So it does have this movable spoiler, but again, it's been integrated and designed thoughtfully and classically so it doesn't look out of place or jarring with a nice grill up here. My favorite detail though, is the high level stoplight. Now, a 964, doesn't have a vent across here. The 964 vents its cabin into the wheel arches, but Adam wanted to incorporate a high level stoplight without ruining the classic theme of the car. So he thought, bring back the look of the vent, but put behind that the high level stoplight. Inside, it's just a nice mix of modern and classic. Little twists like the carbon fiber down here are the modern interpretations. But look, up here, we've got classic 911 70s door handles but they've been moved because before they were down here and Adam didn't like the way that you kind of reach down and they're very awkward to get to. But while keeping the same part, he wanted to make it just a little bit easier to use. So now, much easier to open the door. And there are other little details as well, like for example, all the switches here, which look exactly like the rubber switches that are in the classic cars, but they've all been reproduced in aluminium. So they feel much more tactile. And then there's this lovely little tiny three-spoke steering wheel that feels great. And behind those, the heritage green dials, which are obviously reminiscent of classic late 60s, early 70s, 911s. And that's the point, all these little bits, the switches, the dials, everything just lifts the interior, makes it feel like a very classic 911, nothing like the 964 on which it's based. I'm gonna keep hammering home the attention to detail aspect of these 911s because, well, it's so important to get across the work that goes into them in their 18 month build process. To give you an idea of what goes on, the body is stripped to nothing, but instead of simply making some repairs and repainting them, 
Spot welds are removed and replaced by seam welds because they look neater and they're stronger. And along with all the redesigned metalwork in the front to accommodate the new electric power steering and air conditioning, there's been similar redesigning at the back to remove the recess below the rear screen for the 964's rear wiper motor. Why? Because it spoilt the symmetry of the engine bay. See, that's almost OCD levels of attention to detail. Now, the theory of the Theon is all well and good, but how does it reflect on the way the car drives? Well, amazingly, the owner of this car is happy to let us find out. Although, sadly, we've had to stick a set of ugly trade plates on it because it's not been registered yet. But don't let that spoil things. So, what does it feel like driving a 400,000 pound air-cooled 911? Well, to be fair, I don't think it's really appropriate to talk about the money. I mean, okay, you have to be very wealthy to own a car like this, but it's more about heart and soul than it really is just about pure financial, but pure numbers. This car is the heart and soul of the owner who's described every single detail that he wants in here, but it's also about Adam and his team, their heart and soul, because I can tell you that having met them a couple of times now, they really do build cars with passion and to try and make them the best. And that's why all these Theon 911s have this kind of underlying current of perfection, or at least trying to achieve the best level of perfection as you can get to. And because it's an air-cooled 911, what I just love about getting an air-cooled 911s is the fact they feel so small inside. They feel like they're the tiniest little bumblebee of a car on the road these days in comparison to everything else, including, of course, current 911s, the 992, which while it doesn't feel as big as people sometimes make out it is, it's certainly massive compared to this car. I mean, look, I can stretch my arm across there, no problem at all, and reach the other side. So the gearbox feels great. It's the original G50 gearbox, the five-speed box from the car pre its resto mod. And it has that distinctive feel that 964 gearboxes have. So pre that, the early gearboxes, felt very vague, big long stick, couldn't really work out which gear you were heading into. Then the 964 came along and has this kind of much more precise gait, but it's quite a, almost a viscous feel to it. Whereas you get into a 993, it's six speed box and it feels much more clickety clack and lighter. And then you've got a lovely pedal box that is perfect for heel and towing, so you can go down the box and make that engine sing away behind me. And then talking about the engine, again, it's still the 3.6. I've driven the four litre naturally aspirated engine that Theon do. And I really love that engine. It really revs, 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 and it's all about extreme noise. Whereas this is a bit more refined with the supercharger. It's got plenty of low down torque, so I can put my foot down out of that bend and just feel the car pulling, pulling, pulling from low revs. But although it's got that massive supercharger strapped to the crankcase it doesn't you don't notice it you don't hear the supercharger whine going on which is unusual because if I put my foot down at low revs you'd normally expect to hear it whirring away whereas you don't the only time you really notice the supercharger and apparently this is what the guy who ordered this car wanted was something where you didn't hear that noise but you have the sort of chattering going on and I'll see if I can if you can hear that when I down change and it's off throttle you hear this ch -ch 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 going on behind me. But the other thing about this engine is, it sort of feels kind of naturally aspirated in the sense that it really wants to rev. You feel the torque at low revs, but then put your foot down. And once you get past about four and a half thousand, it's just building, building, building like that, all the way to about seven. And I like that about it because it doesn't make it feel overly modified. It doesn't feel like the car's been all the characters being taken out of that naturally aspirated engine. Well, what was a naturally aspirated engine before the work started. And although this engine is definitely less extreme in the noise department than the four litre Theon that I drove, it's still loud. And I don't know if you can get a sense of that from the in-car, but at the moment I haven't even turned the sports exhaust on because it is a switchable exhaust in this car. And in some ways the noise when you're just going around at relatively low revs, sounds better without the sports exhaust. But if I put the sports exhaust on now, and now put my foot down. Oh! Now, 
if that's not a Christmas present, listening to that, then I don't know what you're expecting Father Christmas to bring this year. Because that is my kind of Christmas present. Thank you, Santa. I'm loving this. And the steering, I love the steering. I love the way this electric power steering doesn't feel corrupting to the car. It doesn't feel like it's ruined it, taken anything away. And the fact is that it's got a small wheel, much smaller than a typical 911 wheel, so it feels quite quick, but it doesn't feel like it's over-assisted. In fact, it doesn't really feel assisted at all. You have to put a little bit of effort into turning the wheel, but that means that by the time you're up to speeds like this, country road speeds, you've still got that nice little reassuring bit of heft to it. And it's still a 911, the front end's bobbing away and the steering's still kind of chattering in your hands. It's just Oh, it's a pleasure, it really is an absolute pleasure. And then there's the car's handling. I just love the way the body control with these tractive dampers. I've got them set up in the lowest damping right now because to be honest, it's quite a bumpy road. But the car's settled, it's not skipping over bumps. Every time I get on the power, I'm not frightened of it hitting a, a ridge and just tipping the car into a handful of oversteer. Everything's just with you, working with you. And it goes through to that beautiful engineering feel, that depth of engineering that I was talking about at the start. It's not just a case of bolting stuff on, it's a case here of it's all set up properly, it's all working with you. The other side of this car, and in fact what the owner asked for, was to have it as a GT car. So a plaything at weekends, but also the kind of thing that you could go across Europe in when you wanted to and be relaxed. So, if you switch off the sports exhaust, I mean, it's still noisy, but it's toned down enough. I can put it into fifth gear. And that actually, relatively, is quite quiet now. And I'm just cruising along a nice A road, the sun's streaming in. I'm not being harassed by the firm suspension. I haven't got too much road noise or wind noise. And again, engine noise. It's all quite civilised in here, really. It's very easy to wax lyrical about cars like these. You know, classic cars that have been given a new lease of life by dint of having hundreds of thousands of pounds lavished upon them. But as I've kept saying all the way through this video, there's more than just money gone into this car. And you can sense it. It's more than just a bunch of hardware upgrades to the body and the brakes and the engine and the suspension with a new lick of paint on top. The great skill, as any OEM manufacturer will tell you, is tuning all those components to make them work together in a harmonious package. Now, the truth is, nothing in life is perfect, of course it isn't. But in my book, Adam's dream of creating the perfect 911, well, it managed to get pretty damn close to it. 